every log profile is different. And today we're going to be focusing on how you can expose and color grade your Canon C-Log3 footage in Premiere Pro. And I'm going to start right now. So when it comes down to exposing for C-Log3 footage, there are a few things that you might need to know about. The first thing is base ISO. Now, unlike other color profiles in the Canon camera, like standard, flat, landscape, all of that has a base ISO of 100, but C-Log3 has a base ISO of 800. So what you don't wanna do is shoot anything below 800. What it will do is it will crush your dynamic range. And that's the last thing you wanna do with C-Log3 footage. You wanna have as much dynamic range as possible. That's the reason you're shooting in C-Log3 to begin with. So don't go below 800. Now, because of that, you might want to actually buy an ND or a neutral density filter. This will limit the amount of light reaching the sensor just by putting a basically a pair of sunglasses on your lens. Now, another thing you wanna do when it comes to exposing for C-Log3 footage is you wanna have it slightly overexposed. Now, the reason that I like doing it is because I find it's easier to retrieve some of the highlight information than it is the shadows. If you have it a bit too dark, you're gonna find that the shadows become quite grainy or are quite almost muddy. So I would ever so slightly expose C-Log3 footage. Now you don't have to way overexpose it. You don't have to go a stop or beyond, but I would go maybe a third or maybe a 0.7 stops over. When we took a look at the histogram, you can see here, I've ever so slightly overexposed this shot. And when you go ahead and color grade it, you're getting these beautiful colors. So you've got a little bit more flexibility with C-Log over the standard profile if you over or underexpose, but ever so slightly over, I find get the best results possible. So now you've exposed it, you've taken a shot. So let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro and color grade this video to get the best colors possible with your C-Log3 footage. So I was recently lucky enough to go to the Yorkshire Dales, which has a high red squirrel population. And I was able to bring my Canon R5 with a 100 to 500 RF lens and I took some beautiful video, but I shot it all in C-Log3. So when I got back, it needed to be color graded to get those beautiful kind of earthy tones back that I saw. You know, red squirrels are a beautiful kind of gingery red color, and that was obviously moss and green, so I really wanna add that. Now I've got a, a LUT, which I'm offering for free, so make sure I go to the link in the description to download it, which creates these beautiful earthy tones, but it doesn't do all of the work for us. And obviously it isn't, it's designed for all of the log profiles, not just specifically C-Log3, it works with Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, this goes on and on. So how can we create this LUT to make it look best with the shots that we've got? Well, what we can do is to tailor each shot and bring it back to what we class as Rec 709. Now that's where the kind of colors are fairly natural. So how can we do this in Premiere Pro? Well, it's actually really easy and all we need to do is go to our Lumetri scope. So what we want to do is go ahead and choose your four clips or I've got four clips, choose your timeline as well. So just to give you a variety, I've got a shot of a stream, which is quite dark. I've got a shot of someone walking, which is quite bright. I've got a shot of a red squirrel, and then I've got a close up of a red squirrel, which is a little bit darker. So we could try and balance all of these to get the best results possible. Obviously, we want the color grading to look consistent for obvious reasons. So what we want to do is, firstly, we want to go to our Lumetri scope. Now, if it isn't visible straight away, go to Windows and you wanna go ahead and select it. As you can see, we've got our Lumetri scope here, but I've got it open already. Now how it does, how it works is it balances the color and it shows you, it's almost like a histogram. If you ever worked on Photoshop, it's a bit like a histogram, but a little bit more technical. So how it works is at the bottom is completely black, so zero, and at the top is completely white, which is 100%. Then all of the colors fall between that, so grays and everything like so, but, Obviously, it also shows color in red, green, and blue. So you can see how the color is deferred. So obviously there's a lot of color, or blue, should I say, in the shadows, and you can see that at the bottom. And you see there's a little hint of red, which obviously is the red squirrel, and obviously it is red. So what we need to do is now go over to our Lumetri color. Now inside our Lumetri color, turn off creative first, and go ahead and open up basic color. Now. If you want to cheat, you can use this little auto icon, but what I recommend doing is to balance it perfectly. So let's start off with clip one here. Now you'll find that sometimes the Lumetri scope takes a while to just let it load first. But as you can see, it has changed. So what we want to do is to brighten the overall exposure of this shot. Then we want to kind of really separate it. So we want to add some more contrast. So what we can do is go to our contrast icon here and increase that like so. 
And we want to increase the highlights. We want to, you know, we want to hit the 90 and the 10. We want some information between 90 and 100 and 10 to zero. But what we don't want it to do is to clip the bottom. That means basically that we've removed any information from those pixels. And we don't really want to do that when we're shooting in log. So try and push it as far as you can, but make sure it doesn't clip the top 100 and bottom of zero. Go to those highlights, increase those, go to the shadows, bring those down slightly. Then I like bringing up the whites and bringing down those blacks. Now, obviously, it's still looking quite undersaturated. So let's go to our saturation here and increase that like so. So let's increase it to 115 in this particular case. Then what we want to do is move to the next shot. So as you can see, immediately you can see how saturated that previous shot is. So we want to replicate that look with this look. So what we want to do is hover over that look and basically look at the lum look at the lumetri scope and seeing how it changes. So you can see it's just hitting the 90 and in the 10, we need to do exactly the same to match the exposure. So we're going to bring it up. We're going to add some more contrast. We're going to bring the highlights up. We're going to bring those shadows down. We're going to bring the whites up and then we're going to bring those shadows down. Then what we do is we go to the previous clip and we'll go back to this clip. As you can see, they're fairly balanced. I'd probably bring down the exposure slightly in this shot. Then I would want to add in that saturation. So we added in 115. Let's add in 115 to this particular case. Then let's move to shot three. Again, as you can see, Lumetri scope's quite narrow. Again, this is what C-Log kind of looks like when in raw, as it were. And that's what it looks like after. So we need to kind of do the same thing. So we'll bring it up, add more contrast, bring down those. Let's bring up those highlights. Let's bring down those shadows, bring up the whites and down the blacks slightly. And then what you can do now, a quick tip, but don't always do this is you can copy and paste the attributes from one clip to another. Now, the problem you've got is if the clip is slightly under or overexposed and you've copied it from one clip to another, it will paste all of the changes that you've made to the other, which might not necessarily work. And I'll show you why, for instance. So to do that, all you need to do is right click on that clip, go to copy, go to the next clip, which is this one, right click, and we're gonna go ahead and click paste attributes. And we want to go ahead and place our Lumetri color you can see here. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, it hasn't necessarily worked. It's added in the contrast, but it hasn't. It's too dark. And that's because the previous clip was correctly exposed and the next clip isn't. So we've copied and pasted all those settings and it hasn't worked because the previous clip has got different settings to it. So it's got a slightly different color and it's slightly different brightness. So it hasn't necessarily worked. So what you need to do to rectify this is to go to the exposure here and increase that like so. So as you can see, if I go to the previous clip now, you can see that the color and overall contrast is fairly similar. So how can we now get these beautiful colors to it? This is where we go ahead and use a LUT or a lookup table. It's kind of like a preset if you've ever worked in Lightroom or Photoshop, it's a quick way of editing, but we've got a little bit of customization we can do to it. So we can change the intensity, saturation and all sorts. So let's go ahead and activate that LUT again. If you want to download this lot, go to the link in the description. So we could do turn off basic correction and go to creative. Now inside creative, we've got a thing called look, which is our LUT. Click on see where it says none and go ahead to where you can see it says browse. Now you want to go to where you've downloaded the LUT. Either you've got a previous LUT or you've got the LUT that we've just downloaded. I've got, if you've downloaded it, it's called clog3earth.cube. I'm going to go ahead and hit click open. And as you can see, that LUT is applied, but it's far too strong. It looks very ginger. So what we need to do is go to our intensity slider and drop that down until you're happy with the result. Around 50% in this, in this particular case works really nicely, but we want to add it to all of the clips. How can we do that? Well, what we can do is add it to an adjustment layer. Instead of adding it to per clip, which you can do if you like, but it will take hours, we can add it globally to all of the clips using an adjustment layer. So what we're gonna do, go to that clip. We're just gonna turn that particular one off for the moment. Go down to your new item icon, and we're gonna go ahead and select adjustment layer. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay to apply it. Then I'm gonna right click. And I'm just going to rename this color grading. I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. I wanna click and drag that over the top of all of my clips here. 
So I'm gonna drag it over like so. So as you can see, all of the clips are going to be affected. Then what we're gonna do is go to our look, click on that none, go to browse, go to the clog 3 earthcube and go ahead and click open. And as you can see, it has applied it to every single one of our clips. But again, the intensity is far too strong. So I believe I changed it down to 50%. So we'll do the same in this particular case. And there we go. As you can see, all of our clips have now been color graded and they look beautiful. I love this look for this kind of earthy, rustic look. And it looks really good for this particular effect. So if you're going for a similar effect to mine, go ahead to the link in the description. You can download that free LUT or you can go ahead and make your own LUT or download someone else's LUT. It's completely up to you. But that is how I edit my C-Log 3 footage shot on my Canon EOS R5.